Welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast, where our job is to help you build visibility, professional credibility, and connection with your ideal client by putting the human at the center of innovative marketing so you can build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship with your ideal clients. I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm honored that you're here with me. If you haven't joined our wonderful marketing transformation community yet, go to innovabiz.co and collect your free gift as well. Do subscribe to the show and also leave a review because it helps others find us. Let's get into today's masterclass on this InnovaBuzz podcast. Even though we have been we do great things today. You always have to look at what can I do better? Innovation comes from inside, not outside. Innovation comes from, innovation to me is more an internal spirit. It's your heart is at the right place. This again goes back to dating. If I was trying to find the right gift for my wife every year, I keep looking and looking and looking. And I don't stop till I really nail it. And that's what innovation is about with a customer, you always need to find what more can I do? That what more is a mindset, not just a process. Welcome back. I hope your week's been awesome so far. If you haven't already listened to my recent conversations with leadership and development coach Stephen Barkley of Flint Rock and with Stefan Smulders, co-founder of Expandy, then go and listen. But stay here first and listen to today's conversation. I'm really excited today to have on the Innova Buzz podcast as my guest, Arjun Sen. He's a former Fortune 500 executive an acclaimed brand Zen, and one of the top growth drivers in the brand and customer experience space. At Papa John's, he led the 3,000 restaurant chain to four years of record growth. He's a celebrated author of the book Customer Karma and a highly sought-after international keynote speaker. His groundbreaking podcast series, Secrets to Win Big, has a rapidly growing global following. In our discussion, Arjun talked to me about how we can wow customers. It's about focusing on their feelings. We talked about learning from being a customer in your own business. And we talked about the key roles of a CEO in any business. Without further ado, then let's fly into the hive and get the buzz from Arjun Sen. Hi, I'm your host, Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm really excited to welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast today from Aurora, Colorado in the USA, Arjun Sen, who's the founder and CEO of Zen Mango, and he's also author of the book Customer Karma, as well as a highly sought after international keynote speaker. Welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast, Arjun. It's a great privilege to have you as my guest. It's truly my pleasure. Thank you. Kerry Heaps, who was our guest on episode 314 of the Innova Buzz podcast, suggested that we have a conversation with you, Arjun. So a big hello to Kerry as well. Yeah, amazing human being. She's, Kerry's amazing. Yeah. Now, I love the full title of your book, Customer Karma. It's uh, got subtitled with Why Stop at a One Night Stand When You Can Have a Lifelong Relationship with Your Customers. And I think that really speaks to our philosophy here of making marketing human again. So I'm really looking forward to digging into your philosophy and how you go about that some more. But before we get to that, what's the impact you're making in the world today, Arjun? So the impact to me is all about one person at a time. It's helping brands win big by helping them see what most other businesses do not. Like in your podcast, you are seeing a vision of making an impact that others do not. That's the reason you're putting this much time to get messages to each one of us. And I really think that seeing beyond is the most important piece. 
Then the second part is all about make ideas bigger. And that's the part where the research you do on each one of us before we talk to you. So we have a great conversation. And then it's all about delivering to one customer at a time, making an impact. So it's all about winning big and seeing beyond. Hmm. Yeah, I like like that concept of winning big, but focusing on one person at a time. And, and certainly one of the wisdoms that um, really good podcasters share and, and you know some of my mentors have shared this with me is speak to one person on the podcast because generally they'll be listening on their headphones so they're in a space by themselves and and you can have that impact much greater if you speak to that one person so i like that focus yeah and that one person concept is not mine and I learned this from a gentleman, a lawyer called Herb Rubinstein, who taught me the concept of writing the best emails. If mm. Jürgen, you sent me an email which only Jürgen sends to only Arjun, only today, about what I need to know from you, four onlys, I have to respond. That only one person is such a brilliant concept as you start going through the day. And I have so many emails I get ready to send, but I do not because it doesn't meet those four yeses. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And and it touches on something that I'm quite passionate about. And it's this idea of, you know, we have this technology today and we can automate so many things and people... Um, do the automation in a way that lose that personal touch, lose that one-to-one -one communication. And I think that's a, a real shame. And often I get emails when I read them and I think, oh, that's just a <laughs> standard automated email that's gone out to a 1,000 people or 10,000 people on their email list. So I don't feel as though it's speaking to me at all. Absolutely. Hmm. All right. Now, one of the things you say, and I was really uh, inspired by this comment, but I'd like to get you to explain it some more and, and go deeper, is that businesses today can win big by going beyond simply satisfying their customers. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So to me, if you get what you paid for, it's okay. But that does not mean you are loyal to that particular brand or business forever. It's just like if I was single and somebody went out on a date with me and if I was just an okay person, she will not get to a search stops here moment meeting Arjun. Search mm. stops here happens when you find magic. And the reason this concept is very important is Many a time, businesses manage the experience by delivering a checklist. And yeah. checklist does not touch the heart. You know, for my wife's birthday, if I just made a checklist, wake up in the morning, wish her, give her a kiss on the cheek, send her flowers, I'm done. And then, honey, on a scale of one to five, how satisfied were you with your birthday celebration? Okay. I would be sleeping on the couch or in the garage, which I sh should and I deserve to. It's all about the feeling, the heart that is there. And what can we do with every customer every time to wow them, to get them to at that OMG moment where if you were the person on the other side, I have to say, Jürgen, I just can't believe you did that with a smile. That I can't believe you did that is what creates the search stops here moment. Mm. Yeah, that's um, it's a great analogy, and um, I think the the idea of the checklist at it, it again comes back to what I was saying earlier about the automation. I think automation is a great thing if used properly, and and same for checklists. So um, having a checklist that reminds you, for example, um, I mean, hopefully you remember your wife's birthday without a checklist, but some of my friends' birthdays I don't remember without a reminder from my calendar. And that's a really important checklist. But then I don't follow a checklist in order to help them celebrate their birthday. So I'll, I will personally reach out to them to congratulate them, to wish them a happy birthday. And if it's a close friend, I'll take other steps, which are, you know, getting together with them 
and giving them some undivided attention. I love that. Absolutely. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, you talk about long-term relationships. So tell us a little bit more about what, what are some of the paths that businesses can take to, first of all, initiate a wow experience at the, at the first touch point and then take that as a path to longer-term relationships? So it's very simple. You know, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. And there's one common thing that connects you and me is we have feelings. We all tend to move towards feelings that make us feel good and walk away from feelings that we do not like. If you and I were seven-year-olds on a soccer field, and if I was a mean kid and you didn't like playing with Arjun, you won't. So understanding that core concept is very important because long-term relationship happens when you wow them short-term, when you earn their trust short-term. Like if I was serving a cup of coffee to you, I know I want to have the long-term, but there's no long-term if I'm not wowing you today. So the most important thing of wowing today is to understand that you again sitting on the other side is a human being. He has feelings. And we are in the feeling business. And to get to the feeling business, there are four steps I request every client of mine to follow. Number one, be human. Second, think human. Third, feel human. And number four, act human. Hmm. Putting yourself in the other person's shoes is very important because every business, their heart is at the right place. They want to act the right way. But I really cannot be you and understand what you need till I put myself in your situation, understand what you, how you think, how you feel. And then if I act, I have a higher chance of putting the smile on your face and you would say, Arjun, I just can't believe you just did that, man. Like that mm. moment is priceless and that is the path to long-term success. If I may add one more thing, you talked about the title of the book. There's a side story is... My daughter at that time was 20 and she is a business partner of mine and very wise soul and, you know, a big part of my life of a single dad. So what she pushed me hard was say, she said that no dad of mine can write a book about one night stands. Okay? And daughters are very cute. And I had to literally argue with her. And finally, she said, fine, do what you want. And I took that as permission and I went with it. But she never approved that, so I just had to share that. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to think how how to follow on from that story. But <laughs> I might circle back to the long term relationships. I love the the four steps that you know, I was thinking when you said that. I was thinking there's a checklist there, but really it's all about um, being human and acting human and treating the other person the way perhaps you might like to be treated yourself and how they like to feel. So following on from that, how do, how do we get a clearer picture of how that person might want to be treated, how that person might feel in any given moment and how we might be able to wow them? So I think it's all about listening. It's all about observing. Uh, in any business, if I am consulting or when I was in the corporate world, I want to be first an actual paid customer for that business. I'll give you a very simple example. A client of mine, I was getting ready for a speaking engagement, is in the elderly home business. When I checked in and actually stayed in a room, what I realized is the beds are made in a way that they feel residents will have accidents. So there's layers and layers of plastic covers on those beds. Now, Jürgen, for you, I don't know about you, for, for me, when I tried to sleep there first night, when I'm turning left, I could hear a sound. When I'm turning right, I could hear a sound. Like the only way I could fall asleep is telling myself, oh, do not move, you idiot. And if I was not a customer in that business, I would have never felt 
these smallest of things. Mm. And with any business, any business you are in, if you just for a second pretend and just feel absolutely be 100% a paid customer in your own business, and you'll see the simplest of things that jump out. A restaurant chain, they do great in downtown locations. When they opened in residential neighborhoods, they were not doing well. So I started asking them, what is your target audience for this location? They said downtown was, you know, singles and you know, business people. This is family. So I pretended that I have a family with young kids. And what I realized was the answer was very simple. In downtown, they have high chairs. If I had a four-year-old, I don't want the chicken to sit on a high chair. Those higher chairs, the stools, bar stools work for adults, young adults. But four-year-olds sitting on a bar stool, a danger accident mm -hmm. is bound to happen. These are simple things you can find out. And that's the first step is being the customer is very important. Yeah, that's such great advice. And I often have experiences with, with somebody that I'm dealing with. Um, and and I think, why do they make it so difficult, or why do they do something that that is so such a bad experience? And it's so it would be so simple to fix. And and it often occurs to me that obviously nobody in that business has ever gone through their own process as a customer, because otherwise, you know, it would be so obvious. Just like you said, you know, the bar stool with the um, families with young children, that's that's clearly something that's not going to work. Yeah, I had the other day, one of the cable companies were installing my internet and we had, and everything was fine. This gentleman was very, very helpful. But there was a problem with my account. So he said, you can just call and sort this out as I install. I said, can I put him them on the speakerphone? They said, yeah, yeah, I would love to hear. Hmm. And within 30 seconds, he was fuming. He said, Arjun, I have never felt what a customer goes through, where you have to listen to nine options. They keep telling you options have changed. You press three. All of a sudden, if you go to a dead end, there's no coming back. That means you have yeah. to hang up and again. But this guy, I loved his customer sensitivity was the empathy he showed when he experienced this. He said, no more of this. I He himself called and got it fixed hmm. because nobody in that company who works in customer service have actually been a customer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I had to laugh because the exam, one of the examples I was thinking of was our internet company. I think they're, they're um, prone to that little trap. So in terms of, um, uh, the, your philosophy around be human, think human, feel human, and act human. Um, how do you build that into the organization of the culture so that, for example, that customer service um, department um, turns around the experiences that, that we've both suffered? So to me, I think I would go back to my personal life, my marriage. You know, seeing the smile on my wife's face is priceless. That's the coolest thing in the planet. And knowing that is what I want in life changes a lot of actions. The same way in the business world, it doesn't matter whatever department we are in, if we all have this clear picture of customers leaving with that equivalent smile. And that is the only goal. And then each one of us help each other to create paths, whether you are marketing, whether you're operations, whether you're finance, you know, because I really feel there are three roles in any company. Role one, that is marketing, making promises to get customers in. Role two, operations, fulfill the promise. And everyone else assist operations to fulfill those promises. That's it. But the problem is, but very important to know, marketing is not branding. Branding is when the operations fulfills the promise that is branding. 
I can tell you everything about Zen Mangal. But the experience you get working for me, and let's say you pay me $5 to do a project for me, with me, that experience will define whether you're coming back, whether you're recommending me. I can do all the branding. I can do, you know, all this fancy stuff, but it doesn't matter. So all of us having the same goal, the customer leaving, doing a high five, you can't, you just can't believe you did that. Connecting the path, but remembering the three roles, making a promise, delivering on the promise, and supporting operations, support the promise. It's very simple, but we complicate it for unnecessary yeah. reasons. Yeah. Yeah, I think the one of the, I mean, I love the concept and, and we have in our process where we, we have a 12-step process actually of marketing. It's kind of a checklist. But one of the things we talk about is that when the sales made, the marketing's not over. The next step is actually delivering an exceptional experience. So it's that wow experience concept. And I love how you've um, broken that down into three fairly simple kind of roles within the business and then everybody is focused outward rather than inward and i think it's the inward focus that that trips up a lot of companies and what how do you think um particularly as companies grow and become bigger how how can they avoid this trap of becoming inward focused and you know looking at well how do we reorganize how do we organize better how do we structure our company and and these things which are I think a part of that complication you mentioned. Yes, yeah, so I would just point to three things when a company grows bigger. One is the fact that doesn't change is you still have to serve one customer at a time. Mm. Whether you are serving coffee or you are an optical, you know, solution provider or anything else, that part of the business never changes you are doing more of them through different people. The second, as you start developing new ideas, experience, it's very important to remember that the experience is delivered by the least paid person in the whole organization. Usually the frontline team members are the least paid. Hmm. Let's not develop something super fancy that takes a rocket scientist. <laughs> to deliver if you can't afford to hire rocket scientists. And the third is the role of a CEO. I really feel many a time organizations, the problem starts with the CEO or the president when they start working one to two levels below and start managing down. It just becomes a disaster. So I really feel that as you grow, the super CEO must have only four things to do. One, clarity on the goal where we are going and help every team member see, connect to the goal. Second, break barriers. He or she has more resources than anybody else to break barriers and it's easier for him or her to do it. Third, bring resources. And fourth, the most important job is be a cheerleader. Hmm. And so you have to look at from all angles. The problem is not one thing, when we start creating an experience on an average, there's no average. There's individual customers and empowering the frontline person to pause, smile, be present is very important. Yeah, I love that concept of the CEO has just those four roles. It's, it's very clear, isn't it? And one of the, one of the things I've often seen in, in my experience in the corporate world where there's large teams involved is the team leader or even you know a more senior manager who's who's outside the team but the, the higher in the reporting chain getting involved in the smaller issues and people kind of feel as though first of all it's that experience inside you talked about feelings before so people feel as though they're not trusted or they they don't have they're not empowered to give their best or do their roles in a way that um, that can please the customer or can wow the customer. Absolutely, and if you look at if I was working for you, and I do not think you trust me, 
I would play defensive. Hmm. All I'm doing is so I don't get fired on a given day. Yeah. And another way to look at this is Michael Jordan has this most incredible Nike ad. If you Google Michael, Nike, and failure, you'll find this ad. In this ad, Michael talks about in his whole career, he has missed 9,000 plus shots. Hmm. Some 50 or 70 or 100 times, he was given the game winning shot and he missed. He said, I failed, and that's the reason I succeeded. Michael Jordan, because if the game is coming towards the end, you and I may be cowards of chicken and we may not choose to take the shot. So we can mm. give it to Michael. So that's what I love. What you just said was when we stop trusting people, they don't trust themselves anymore, which means they don't go above and beyond. So creating that culture of empowering every person when they feel this is my company. If there's a napkin on the floor, some dirt, trash that is there, we pick it up because that's what I do in my home. Hmm. And that feeling of empowerment, what you said, is one of the coolest things in our conversation today. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. How do we how do we get, you know, this wow experience? I mean, it's it's kind of well, there's two aspects I'm thinking. The we deliver a wow experience to a customer and, and that is magic because I know I've gone away from experiences feeling really great, feeling as if I'm the most important person in the world to that company or that that person that I've interacted with right then and there. And, and of course, they've dealt with my issue. They've satisfied my need, whatever it was that I, I came to them for. How do we maintain that or even exceed that the next time because now my expectation is next time i deal with that company um, that i have the same experience and and it happens a lot for example in restaurants or hotels we go there and and oh that was so fantastic last time so i'm going to go back there and then the next time it doesn't quite get to that level even though it might be a really good experience i haven't matched that high expectation so how do we build in that consistency? Let me tell you a story you would love. <laughs> Our daughter was three years old. We went to Disney World. And she fell in love with Goofy. And this was the first evening. She meets Goofy. And Goofy was sitting down. My daughter jumps onto Goofy's lap. And Goofy, Goofy tickled my daughter. Yeah. So all night, the kid goes to sleep with a smile on her face. Goofy tickled me. <laughs> Next day, we are walking. All of a sudden, my daughter just darts like she could have won a 100 meters or 50 meters world championship. <laughs> she sees Goofy. She runs after Goofy. And she goes to Goofy, pulls his pants, stops Goofy and says, Goofy, remember me? I'm Raka. And you tickled me yesterday. And I'm thinking exactly what you said. I know this is a different Goofy. I know this Goofy will just walk away and will ruin my daughter's moments. Hmm. But I think that's the part where I had to have little faith in a Disney organization that they know these things do not happen just once in Arjun's life. They happen in everybody's life. So this new Goofy sat down. My daughter jumped on his lap. And I have pictures, three pictures of my daughter giggling like crazy with Goofy tickling her. Which means for an organization, there are three places we need to focus on. Place one is, what are some common standards that every person must get? You talked about restaurant example. If the food is not hot, if the order is not accurate, like nothing else, then service cannot make those up. Like you really need to deliver on the core basics. Hmm. Second, to have a list of common opportunity areas. Training team members to read these, that if this happens, like if you are there with your significant other and every few seconds you are, you and your significant other, your necks are moving left and right, that means you guys need help. Hmm. Somebody needs to show up. So preparing people for these common moments is very important. And third, then there's the unknowns. 
or an unknown, you have to be present. You have to listen. You have to be there knowing that even under the most difficult circumstances, the customer can leave as that diehard fan of yours. If only you showed care, empathy, and not say anything, just saying, ah, that's very sad it happened. Okay? You don't have to say, what can I do? That what can I do comes much later. You don't have to put that $5 gift card in front by saying, okay, shut up right now. I'm giving you a $5 gift card. Like, you know, that's yeah. what you're worth. Like, no, the customer is worth way more. Don't just say, I'm going to replace the food. The customer may not want to eat another bad pie after there was a hair in the pie. Okay. Mm. So just listening to the customer is very important. But following those three steps is very important because the second time it happened, that's when I start trusting the brand. Like now I trust Disney more is Goofy tickled my daughter again. So that's, it's an ongoing journey. Like you are as good as you are where yesterday that gets you. And one thing that happens is once you are providing an amazing experience in between, if you slack, customer will be forgiving. The customer mm -hmm. cares enough to call you and give you a mouthful to say, yeah. I can't believe you did this because I care. I'm in a relationship. I'm in a connection. But you have allowances for future failures, like you're buying an insurance. When you screw up one day, because you're human, humans make mistakes, that's okay. The customer will give you a chance to recover and come back. Hmm. That is a really good point that you've just made there. I mean, I love the love the core uh, processes or the core um, standards that you basically build into the culture and the brand. I mean, that's part of the brand. The uh, but that idea of that customers will be forgiving if if something isn't quite right when there's that strong relationship mm -hmm. is a really important one. And it occurred to me that, yeah, you know, I I like to give feedback to if I've had a bad experience with somebody. My first response is, let me give you some feedback. Here's here's how I felt in this experience, and it would have been so much better had you done this or had you done that. And I think just you know because I I think to myself if my customers give me that feedback, that is so valuable to me because then. I can do something. I can take that on board and make changes, or of course, I can ignore it. Ignore it. I have choices, and I often wonder why some businesses get offended when they hear somebody deliver that feedback, rather than take it on board and say, "Oh, thank you. We heard you. Tell me more," or you know, just listening. Because if they just listen, even if they don't do anything, as you said. Um, that often is enough. Yeah, the reason some of us, we all do it, you know, some more, some less, is we take the customer for granted, is we do not look closely at the currency the customer pays. It's clearly written with invisible ink that this dollar or whatever currency came from the customer's pocket. None of us are ever mean, abrupt, rude to our bosses. Okay? If you were my hiring authority, I bring an extra smile for you every day. <laughs> I may even bring your favorite cup of coffee every day because we know where the paycheck is coming from. When we start forgetting that the paycheck is really not coming from you, my boss, it is coming from the customer who pays you and me, that forces us and teaches us how to be more patient. And the second thing is what I loved, what you again talked about there was about getting feedback is, I know you want to get feedback. I think the customer also wants to get give you feedback. Hmm. But the onus is on you. How do you create the right opportunity for them to talk? It cannot be in a survey because not all of us want to write it down. It could yeah. very well be that you just texted me if I was a customer by saying, Arjun, I would be in your part of town. Can I buy a cup of coffee? And then as we talk, 
It's all about a relationship. You and I, a relationship. Then I can tell you, you know what? I have to tell you this, man. Last time when I dealt with your team, it wasn't good. This mm. happened. And you listen. And I'm like, and then at the end, I just finished just like you were my therapist. I said, I'm so glad I could tell you that. You didn't do anything. But mm. creating opportunities for customers to share is very important. And it is not a formal setting. It's not a survey. We just check a box with a survey by saying, it's not the customer job to fill a survey. It's, no. Yeah. Now you're making them work extra hard after they got a bad experience. So. Yeah, that's right. It, it reminded me of something again. Um, that is such great advice, you know, having creating that environment where there's a relationship and there's a conversation, a genuine conversation. And then people feel comfortable saying, hey, Arjun, um, you know, that last experience I had with your team just wasn't real good for me. Um, the What you reminded me of, I get surveys all the time in my email. And my first response is, as I'm reading through email, because I like to kind of do my email in certain times of the day, get it done real quick, and then get back to the important things that I'm working on. And so if I see request for survey, I think, no, I don't have time for that right now. It's not important. And I tend to ignore most of the surveys, except when I've got a fresh, bad experience in my mind, then I'll say, okay, you asked for my opinion. I'm going to let you have it. And I will tell them about a really bad experience. And I often feel better about that because that, that's allowed me to vent about a bad experience. But the danger of that, of course, is all the other ones where I've said, no, I don't have time for that right now. It's not important. They're the ones where I've probably had either a good experience or a neutral experience with that company. And so they could become companies that might wow me if, if they get that feedback from their customers. Yeah. And I think that's the part where the big part of getting the feedback has to be during the experience. Because think for a second, and I'm going to digress a little bit, is if you were single and I was your best friend and I set you up on this date <laughs> and the woman you go out with, when she meets you in the first few seconds, has to put you in one of three categories. I love this guy. Or what the heck am I doing with him? Let's see how it goes. During the whole date, you know, there are pluses, minuses, everything. But at the end of the day, she has to look at you and you have to look at her. And with her in front, you guys have to decide in your mind. And she's deciding about you is, even if this guy is the last guy on this planet, I don't want to have anything to do with him. <laughs> or, you know, we have a common interest going to the museum or the ballpark or something like that. Or in between Friday night, extra movie ticket. Okay, We can watch a movie together. The same thing happens with our customers. Every customer, every time in an experience sits in front of us, makes a decision about the future in the back of their mind. Mm. So it's like we have home field advantage every time, whether it's your product, whatever it is, the customer has you in front. Now, what we need to look at is what can we do during part of the experience to make a meaningful connection? Again, I will go back to a retail or a restaurant. So many times a manager comes and he doesn't even stop for me. Everything okay and moves on. Like I even want to hear the word everything okay, 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 and he's gone. And I want to say no, 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 no. A friend of mine has this amazing practice. When a manager comes, he would say, sir, I will give you feedback only if you sit down for me. <laughs> and then he would say, like, if you don't have time for me, why the heck do I give you feedback? And that feedback can happen during, because the customer you're still in the experience. So creating opportunities to get that feedback during the experience. And that's the most priceless because then if something was wrong, you can fix it right then and there. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's priceless, that advice. And it, it reminded me of something that happened to me years and years ago. This was when we were still traveling. And I... I was lucky enough to be upgraded to a first class flight um, because I've been traveling so much. And 
in those days, this was a flight to Japan. And what I hadn't realized was that unlike most other flights, flights to Japan still allowed smoking. And I was in a seat and there was a woman next to me and she said, oh, look, my husband's sitting in front there or behind, wherever it was. Would you mind swapping seats so that we can be together? And I, I was on my own. So I said, yeah, sure, that's no problem. And so I ended up sitting next to another person who turned out to be a chain smoker. And so this was a a real a real problem for me, this 10-hour flight sitting next to a person that was chain smoking. And of course, I was inhaling all the fumes. So the staff were fabulous. They quickly realized what was happening and they did their absolute best to make it least painful for me. And then at the end of the flight, they gave me a, a bottle. As I was leaving the flight, attendant gave me a bottle of Dom Perignon champagne, a full magnum, and apologized. It wasn't their fault, really. It was my oversight. But you know that experience still is in my mind as something that was unpleasant for me turned into a pleasant experience. And, you know, I, unfortunately that, that company has gone out of business for other reasons, but I was a huge fan of that flight company. And what's brilliant there is they noticed, hmm. even though they couldn't do anything, they showed their sensitivity by showing, sorry, at least we can make your experience after you leave the flight a little better. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, Arjun, this is wonderful. I could go on talking customer experiences and sharing stories, and I love your dating analogies um, for ages, but I'm just aware of the time, so I want to respect your time and uh, listeners' time as well. And let's move on to the buzz, which is our innovation round, and it's designed to help our audience who are primarily innovators and leaders in their field with some tips from your experience. So I have five questions in the round. Hopefully, you'll give us an answer that will inspire the listener to go and do something awesome today as a result. So, are you ready? I'm ready. What do you think is the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Be dissatisfied. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, can you elaborate? Yeah. So, many a time, you know, to me, even though we have been, we do great things today. You always have to look at what can I do better. Mm. Innovation comes from inside, not outside. Innovation comes. From, innovation to me is more an internal spirit. It's your heart is at the right place. This again goes back to dating. If I was trying to find the right gift for my wife every year, I keep looking and looking and looking. And I don't stop till I really nail it. And that's what innovation is about with a customer. You always need to find what more can I do? That what more is a mindset, not mm. just a process. Yeah, I love that. What more mindset, yeah. Particularly in terms of customer service. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? See beyond. Many a time. See beyond. See beyond. Many a time we absolutely see beyond. Like you have to see what others do not. Ideas mm. do not need to be invented. They need to be discovered. Ideas already exist. I'll give you a quick example. Is I was trying to build a loyalty program for a business. Instead of starting from scratch, I started looking at loyalty programs for airlines, for Massage Envy, for a gym, and a few other places. I just put them on big posters in front. And as we were staring, the answer comes to us. So mm. answers are always there. You really have to put yourself in that mindset of seeing what others haven't and pause and give yourself time and brilliant big ideas will come to you. Hmm. Yeah, and I like the approach of looking outside your own industry because as you said, you know, sometimes you think of doing, for example, that um, loyalty program and there's loyalty programs that other industries have done. So what can we learn from their loyalty yeah. programs? Absolutely. Hmm. Okay, do you have a favorite resource you use most often? Yeah, you know, Google, of course, is always there. But to me, talking to people. Hmm. On a given day, I want to learn from at least three to five people. And 
we all have 24 hours in a day, which means I have to take time away from something else to do this more. So I have stopped reading more because reading was very passive to me. I'm still reading, but at the same time, talking to people, learning, asking questions, this podcast is a great example. I learned quite a few things from you is very important because that is dynamic. That makes you think, why does this person think that way? These conversations are very important. Yeah, I love it. And and I have this uh, expression that I use quite a bit with some of the events that we run, which is having meaningful conversations. So it's more than just um, how are that. you or what's the weather like? It's, it's really um, challenging us to think, as you said. So if I have to answer that again, I would say have meaningful conversations. <laughs> right. All right. What's the best way to keep a client on track? Listen, be present, and show you care. Hmm. The show you care is very important because we yeah. are all in the healing business. So basically, the goes back to that airline example. Airline example. They were present. They watched, and they showed their care with the bottle of wine. Yeah, champagne. Yeah, love it. All right, and the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves: be themselves. Hmm. And you know, if anybody could see me right now, of course, you're listening to me. What you would see is my right eyebrow and my left eyebrow are not exactly the same. My daughter always makes fun of me, and I'm not even biologically symmetric. Okay. I just think the world really doesn't need another marketing solution or a branding solution. But the brand world needs Jürgen because you are unique and you offer unique things that only you can deliver. Hmm. And accepting that, being excited about it, and being excited to hire yourself is very, very important. And that gets your confidence. Like if I'm not excited that Arjun is unique, Arjun is different, and I would love to hire this Arjun guy. It's just like being in a restaurant when you ask the server, what's your favorite? And the server doesn't know. You're not ordering anything. <laughs> the server has to be excited. You have to be excited and ex be excited about who you are. You're already different. You're already unique. Celebrate that, please. Mm. Yeah, I love it. And uh, another great example, yeah. If the, if the server can't, doesn't have a favorite, yeah. And um, the, yeah, the idea that we're all different and a lot of us don't necessarily embrace that or have the confidence to say, well, I offer a lot of things. So self-awareness is really important there, isn't it? Yeah, and we are spending, too many of us are spending too much time and money trying to be somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, life's too short. It can be somebody else. So stop trying. Just be yeah. you. You are already you. So don't have to be anybody else. Yeah, love it. Well, thanks, Arjun. This has been fabulous. Now, where can people find out more about you and find out about your book and maybe even reach out and say thanks for what you've shared today? So first of all, I want to thank you because you have been such an amazing host. Level of preparation you go through is simply incredible. I do podcasts and I learned a lot from you. Thank you for that. Mm, thank so you. The place where people can listen and, you know, uh, they can find me is zenmango.com, zen, Z-E-N, -E zen, mango, the fruit.com. And again, this is truly a pleasure. And if we can add any nuggets to your audience today, it would be an honor and a pleasure to me personally. Well, thank you for what you shared. Now, do you, is there a parting comment or advice you'd like to leave with our listener today? Yeah, the parting comment is be present. I live by one simple principle is no regrets. Hmm. I never tell myself or tell anyone else, Arjun, you should have done this yesterday. Okay. I did the best I could. Don't get me wrong. Even the best can get better. Hmm. But living a life of no regrets is very important because yesterday what you did was the best you could. Being in present allows you to reflect on yesterday to be better. So let's not spend time trying to change yesterday or day before. Let's be present, enjoy, live life with no regrets and be better even tomorrow because only the best invests in getting better. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, it's so important to uh, keep that in mind that 
you know, you can spend, I, I like to say if I have something that I regret from yesterday um, and I get into that feeling of, oh, I wish I'd done that different, I'll allow myself a few moments to have that feeling, but then I'll snap myself out of it and say, well, I can't change that now, but I can change now. I love that snap because we are human beings. It's okay to have the feeling, but snapping is the thing. Yeah. If you are in control, you're the boss. You're bringing yourself back to present. Love that. Mm. All right. And finally, Arjun, who else should I get on this show and why? Uh, you know, there's a few people I've been thinking of, and one is uh, Chad Bormeister. Mm -hmm. Chad is a very unique gentleman because he gives from his heart, okay? Like to the point where there are times I worry about, <laughs> is he spending too much time giving instead of taking care of himself, his business? So the world is better because of people like him. He's a very smart person. He's the CEO of a company called Scalex. But in his spare time, or which he makes time for all of us, he's always there trying to give. And I really think a person like that who's really smart with a big heart could be a great, great, Amazing guest for you. Mm. And I'll All right. Well, Chad. thank you. I appreciate that. So I look forward to connecting with Chad and and we'll see if we can find a time to bring him on the show as well. Absolutely. So thanks so much for sharing your time and your insight so generously today. Love the stories. Um, I'll, I'll remember Goofy and the Disney story and your daughter being tickled now. and <laughs> that'll, that'll be a connection for standardizing that wow experience. Um, and so many other great stories that highlight that whole philosophy of really caring about your customer and delivering that wow experience over and over again and building the relationship. So thanks so much. I've really enjoyed it. I wish you all the best for the future and let's stay in touch. Thank you. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed that informative and delightfully insightful conversation with Arjun and took something away from his episode. There were so many takeaways for me from this episode, including the search stops here moment, the idea of focusing on one person, being the customer in your own business, of course, just to mention a few. I'd love to know what you took away from Arjun's episode. Leave a comment below the blog post, which you can find at innovabiz.co forward slash Arjun Sen. That is A-R-J-U-N-S-E-N. -E all lowercase, all one word, innovabiz.co forward slash Arjun Sen. You'll also find contact information there for getting in touch with Arjun, as well as links to the Zen Mango website, to Arjun's social media pages, and the other resources we spoke about in today's conversation. If you like this episode, please share it with two other people that it might help, maybe even more people that it might help, and tag me in on those shares, and I'll reach out to you with a special thank you surprise. Arjun suggested that we have a conversation with CEO of ScaleX.ai and co-founder of Living a Better Story, Chad Burmeister, on a future InnovaBuzz podcast episode. So Chad, keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation from us to the InnovaBuzz podcast courtesy of Arjun Sen. Tune in again to the next episodes of the Innova Buzz podcast where we've got yet more fantastic guests lined up, including serial entrepreneur, author and speaker Pete Martin and storyteller and creator Paul Socket. Thanks for listening to this episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show to be reminded of new episodes. It's free to subscribe. Leave a review if you like. Even if you don't like me, I'm okay with that. I'm asking you to leave a review because it helps other people find this show. Go to innovabiz.co to join our marketing transformation community and access a free gift my team and I made for you. It's the Marketing Master Mini Class. We want to give you everything you need to transform your marketing into a human-centered, relationship-focused growth engine. Until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Remember, be awesome and keep innovating.